The former partner of Levi Belfield has described to Sky News and the News of the World the years of brutality she suffered at his hands. Emma Mills bore three children by the man who repeatedly raped and beat her during the ten years they were together. He was sentenced to life this week after being convicted of murdering two students and attempting to kill a schoolgirl. She told Sky's Colin Brazier why she's now convinced that Belfield killed Millie Dowler while they were living in Walton on Thames in 2002. I did love him. He'd been raping me for a few years. I thought he was going to kill me. He was a good dad. Yeah. Thank God he has been given life. No comment. Emma Mills spent ten years with Levi Belfield. She's the mother of his three children. Little did she know he was a killer who prowled around bus stops looking for young blonde women. But now he'll spend the rest of his life in prison for the murders of Marsha McDonnell and Amelie Delagrange and the attempted murder of Kate Sheedy. The police believe he could be responsible for countless other crimes, not least the murder of 13-year-old Millie Dowler. Levi Belfield lived with Emma Mills, yards from where Millie went missing. In her first interview, also in today's News of the World, Emma Mills reveals the dangerous psychopath behind the man she once loved. I met Levi in um, Rocky's nightclub in Cobham where he was um, working on the door, he had the door, doorman, door supervisor. Um, quite impressed by him, I was young and... How old were you? Um, 18, yeah. Um, he treated me like a princess at the beginning. Um, little did I know he was, there was other women as well, so it wasn't just me. Um, he was kind and generous and do anything for you um, but then there was also the nasty side which you kind of hang on to the nice bits to try and lose the nasty bits if you see what I mean but I thought I loved him as well I did love him I did love him was, it, was there a moment you, when you thought crikey this isn't the man I thought I was getting there's something wrong here uh, yeah um, well, he hit me quite badly when we were living at, in Walton. Um, sort of punches in the face, and um, so I didn't go out for two weeks. Um, obviously, because I didn't want people to see the bruises, and neither did he, actually, you know. Um, so then, yeah, but then it's all the all the sorries, and I love you, and because of the drink and anything would make him go anything you know if I cooked him something that was wrong if there was drink then you know that could make him switch he'd been raping me for a few years um, and this particular night it was so bad I thought he was going to kill me So it was an accumulation of things, really. And I woke up the next morning and I just thought, this, I can't do this anymore because I was actually frightened to go to bed that night, so I left. Presumably everybody who is a victim of domestic violence like that doesn't know whether what's happening to them is any worse than what's happening to anybody else, but did it cross your mind that what was going on with him was really unusual, that this was a man who was capable of in the most enormous violence and maybe Capable of not enough, capable uh, of what he's been found guilty of. No, I never, never crossed my mind. If it had ever crossed my mind that he had done those crimes at the time, I would have been out of there and straight to the police, whatever. However frightened I was, it's any decent human being would do, whether you're frightened or not. Emma, just tell us about that night when it may and does look like to a number of people that Levi Belfield killed Millie Downer. Mm. We just got back together um, from when I'd come out of the refuge and Levi disappeared that day. Um, I just couldn't get hold of him on the phone. Um, and then he came back at half past eleven that evening and when I, obviously I saw that he'd, been, he'd changed but he said no he hadn't and I said 
you have changed and he said no I haven't I went to bed he came up to bed he woke up at I think it was about three half past three and said he was going back to the flat and I was like well why are you going in the middle of the night you know and he said oh it's just because I want to have a lay in in the morning and um, and the kids will wake me up and you know middle of the night and I was just like oh whatever you know um, so I think the next day he came and picked me up from West Straight and we went back to the house the, when he dropped me off um, there was no bedding and I automatically thought you know been here with a woman this is past history um, so I rung him he said that the dog had done something on the bed which I didn't believe because my dog didn't do that you could sleep you know really well trained secondly he wouldn't bother cleaning it up because he just wouldn't bother leave that job like that for me um, he said he put the um, sheets in the bin so I went out to the bin I looked for the sheets there was nothing there um, and I just thought it was just another woman. He changed the bedding because that was possibly yeah. where yeah. he killed Millie Downer. Mm. It's as simple as that. Do you think he killed her? Yes, I do. And why do you say that? Is it just because when you look just at all the evidence? All the evidence and it, the things surrounding that day, and then, you know, a week later, my car got so called stolen and. There was a suggestion that he maybe borrowed your Red Day yeah, car, which was he quite he had a rare day. car. Yeah. And you think he took your car and disposed of her body in your car? The fact he's never actually going to leave prison, does that make you feel safer? Mm. Was that in I your mind? You really, him, yeah. you really wanted him to go down oh, God, yeah. for life? Life should mean life, you know. And thank God he has been given life and he will never come out. You had children together, three children. Yes. What was he like as a father? Um, he was a good dad. Yeah. Um, they adored him. And they still do now. But they would ask me, where's he gone and why hasn't he said goodbye? Um, doesn't he love us anymore? So I, I told them that he was in prison and, um, and that, that, that even just that bit was terrible, telling them that because they loved their dad, they didn't.